as if the entire worldwide embarrassment that is the Trump Ukraine fiasco could get any more embarrassing right now. We've learned that Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is back in Ukraine right now, right? He's in Ukraine right now. And what is Rudy doing back in Ukraine? He is talking once again to former prosecutors that were part of how this entire scandal started in the first place. Look at what Giuliani is doing as per the New York Times. Tuesday, he met with a former Ukrainian prosecutor in Budapest. This is Yuri Lutsenko. That name, if you've been watching the impeachment inquiry hearings, should ring a bell because it has come up dozens of times during those hearings. Wednesday, he went to Kiev or Kiev, as we are now told is the Ukrainian pronunciation, went to Kiev, Ukraine to meet with more Ukrainian prosecutors including the infamous Viktor Shokin, who is almost at the center of this entire controversy. The reason why Rudy is back in the region, back in Ukraine, meeting with these people now, he's supposedly gathering information to be part of a documentary series for a right wing media outlet meant to promote Trump and to defend Trump against the case for impeachment. What a convenient trip for Rudy Giuliani, right? Imagine you're running impeachment hearings centered around Trump and his associates using Ukraine to try to smear Joe Biden in a bribery extortion scandal. And you say, OK, you know who we should really bring in? Let's bring in Rudy Giuliani. He should testify. Let's get in touch with Rudy. We did. You know what? Turns out he can't come to the hearings because he's in Ukraine right now meeting with the exact same people asking for information that can be used in a right wing media piece to argue that there is no case for impeachment against Donald Trump. Hearings about Rudy possibly committing or organizing crimes to help the president. Sorry, he can't make it. He's tied up back in Ukraine, possibly committing crimes or organizing crimes to help the president under the guise of he's now a TV producer, I guess, working on some right wing media um, uh, documentary meant to defend Donald Trump. And you know what? We really shouldn't be surprised by this. Remember that when about I think it was six months ago, Donald Trump was interviewed by George Stephanopoulos on ABC News and George Stephanopoulos said to him, Mr. President, after everything that's happened with Russia, after the Mueller probe, this, that, all this different stuff, if Russia came to you with uh, dirt on opponents for 2020 or China came to you with dirt on opponents for 2020, would you go to the FBI or would you would you accept it? And Trump said, yeah, I'd, I'd at least look into it. Go to the FBI. No, nah, probably not. But I would at least look into what they were bringing me. And if I were them, if I was as immoral as they are, I would probably be doing the same thing because there have been no consequences. If you are Trump and you see, well, so far I've gotten away with everything. Sure, some of my old friends are in prison, but I'm fine. I would probably assume impeachment's going nowhere, likely accurate. And that means I still have to figure out how to win in 2020. Dispatch Rudy back to Ukraine, accept the dirt from Russia, accept dirt from China. At this point, I would hope that authorities are watching Rudy Giuliani's movements, which actually leads me to the next question. Was it that great of an idea to have him leave the country in the sense that his two henchmen, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, were grabbed by authorities, arrested and indicted as they were heading to Europe on one way plane tickets? Giuliani might be close behind them or he might never see consequences at all. We just don't know because when someone is in that second justice system, when you're in the justice system for what are effectively the American oligarchs, not everybody else, you actually uh, it, it becomes harder to predict whether you'll you'll ever be held accountable for your actions at all. So Rudy back in Ukraine, it sounds stranger than fiction, but that's the reality. If this were a screenplay, it wouldn't be believable. It would be thrown onto the cutting room floor. It happens to be real life. Let me know what you think about Rudy in Ukraine. I'm on Twitter at dpacman or leave a reply if you're watching on YouTube. Today's program is sponsored in part by Blinkist dot com slash Pacman. If you've not already heard about Blinkist, it's amazing. It's an app for your phone, tablet or web browser. And what they do is they take nonfiction books, popular nonfiction, critically acclaimed nonfiction, they condense the book into a 15 minute audiobook. You get all the most important information and insights from each book, but you can soak up the entire essence of the book in one sitting. I've listened to a ton of books on Blinkist. One recent one is uh, Robert Reich's new book, The Common Good. 
also bunk by Kevin Young, useful in preparing me for the pseudoscience miniseries that we're producing. And if you are a David Pakman show viewer or listener, you can get a seven day free trial by going to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, use the link in the video description after the free trial. If you like it, you can get uh, the full access to thousands of condensed audiobooks for about five bucks a month. That's B L I N K I S T dot com forward slash P A K M A N.